Okay. All right. Good day, everyone. The topic before us here is direct and indirect or inverse proportion. Okay, so um, I'm going to be taking you through direct and indirect proportion, which can also be called inverse proportion. So my name is um, Akaola Deji. I'm from Golden Bond School. So let's write on. Okay, so now what are the objectives of this lesson? The objective of this lesson is for number one is that the pupils are able to comprehend between direct and inverse proportion. Do not forget, I once said that direct and indirect proportion or indirect proportion can also mean inverse what proportion. And also, the children are going to be learning how to calculate direct and inverse proportion. So let's move on. Uh, what is direct proportion? I like to illustrate this analogy or this definition with this analogy. Now let's write down. Now, number of cars and the uh, prices. Now, when you have one car, a car costs five never. Two of such cars will cost 10 never. Three of such cars cost 25 never. And 10 of such cars will cost 50 never. Now, what do I mean? Now, if you look at something here, the prices, the number of cars is increasing. Increases from one two, five, and now to what, 10. So the price of the car is increasing. So you might want to look at it now. The high proportion means that something is igniting something. So when something is increasing, it affects the other thing. And that other thing is what increasing. Now, what are these things? Now, the number of cars is increasing. So is the what? Price of the car. So now we can see that if the number of articles purchase increases, then the total cost will also what increase. Now, the money deposited in the bank. When you deposit money in the bank, the more the money, then the more the what interest. Now look at it. Now let's explain it in another way. Now if you look at diet proportion, diet proportion is with a sign, a coily sign that looks like a fish. You can see that's the proportionality sign. Now do not forget that direct proportion it's the same thing as proportion. So sometimes you can say uh, proportion. You can say proportion. And um, no, the opposite of proportion is inverse proportion. Now, it is because we have the word inverse as the opposite. That's why we have to put it as direct. Usually, it's also the proportion. And that's what we mean proportionality. Okay, now let's move on. Now, N is proportional to P. The number of cars proportional to what price. As the price increases, so as the number of cars increases, so the price what increases. Okay, so now let's take this example to illustrate better what we have said. Now, five books cost 400 naira. Now, listen, five books cost, or if five books cost 400 naira, what is the cost of seven such books? Now, how do we solve it in a very simple way? Okay, now five books cost 400 naira, as we can see, then seven books cost the, the the cost of several books we do not know okay so how do we get it we we uh we impute a variable could be y could be z could be anything into that you know so how do we do it then we cross multiply we want to cross multiply we say five multiplied by y and seven multiplied by what 400 now let's see it appear on the screen now as you can see five Multiply by y equals to 7 multiplied by 400, and that is this 5y equals to 2800. Now, what do you have here? You have, um, how, do we, how do we find y? Now, 5 is this, 5 is a question of y. So, what do we do? We say y equals to 2500 and 2800 divided by 5. Boom. That is y equals to 560. Now, another way in which you can solve this. Um, in way you can solve the proportion is by using the formula method using the word proportionality sign. As you can see, x is proportional to what? Y. Now, x is proportional to y. It means that we are going to derive a constant. Now, when you change the proportionality sign, when you change the proportionality sign into an equation, now it becomes x equals to ky. Now, the k is called the constant. Now, do not forget, I said, when you change the proportionality sign into an equation, 
which is probability sign into an equation, it turns into equals to and a constant. Now, so let's move on. Now, where k is a constant, I mentioned that. Okay, now x equals to 400 naira, then y equals to what? 5. Now, what do you have? You have 400 is proportional to what? 5. Okay? All right, so 400 equals to k5, just like I mentioned. For, um, just like I mentioned up there. Okay, so how do you get your k? Now, you divide both sides by the constant, by, by the proportionality, by the coefficient of what k, which is 5, then you have what? Your constant happens to be what? 80 naira. Okay, so how do we do it? So if x equals to 80, 80 y, don't forget that the k, don't forget if you look up here, we say x equals to k y. Now we've derived, we've gotten a value for k. A value for k is what? 80 naira. I have x equals to 80 naira times what? y. So how do you do that? Now where y, don't forget where y equals what? 7. So your x equals to 80 times 7. And that is what? 560 naira. Boom. Clap yourself. Okay, all right. So um, you can see, so you can either solve it this way or the formula way. So this is how to what? Uh, simplify direct proportion. Okay, so let's move on. Now you may, you may want to take some exercises to challenge yourself. So you have it here shown on the screen. So let's quickly move on to direct or inverse proportion. Now, so what is that or inverse proportion? An inverse proportion, of course, when one value increases, the other does what decreases. Now, for example, more, the more workers on a job would reduce the time complete to reduce the time to complete the task. Do you understand? So the more people you have to do something, it reduces the time. The, 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 the time you have to do something. So the lesser people you have, the more the time. So the, the, the reason why inverse is different from direct proportion is because in a direct proportion, something ignites something. So as the number of cars is increasing, so the price is what increasing. But in, a, in, in, in an inverse proportion, when you have more people to do something, then the, the, the time, to achieve that thing does what comes to what minimum. So it, it is opposite. As, as the number of cars increases, so the price increases. But in an inverse proportion, as the number of as the, as the number of a task increases, so the time what decreases. So you can see it's opposite. One increases by time, and the other one decreases by what? Time. Okay, all right. So let's illustrate with an example. Let's use speed or how and travel time. Now look at the speed and travel time are inversely proportional because the faster we go, the shorter time we arrive at our destination. So let's see, as speed goes up, travel time goes down. And as speed goes down, the travel time goes what? Up, okay? All right, so now let's take this question. It says, four people can paint a fence in three hours. How long will it take six people to paint it? Wow. Assume everyone works at the same word. Wait, now, let me read the question again so I can understand. It says here, four people can paint a fence in three hours. Four people can paint a fence in three hours. How many will it take six people to paint that fence? Okay, now, you must take note of the people and the, 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 the time. Now, it is an inverse proportion. This is an inverse proportion. As the number of people goes up, the painting time goes down. Now, as the number of people goes down, the painting time goes up significantly. Okay, now we can use T equals to K all over time. Now, do not forget the difference between inverse proportion and direct proportion is that direct proportion is something is multiplied by something. So that means something is increasing something. It multiplies. But in an inverse proportion, there's always what? Division. You can see we multiply the constant. But here we are dividing the constant by the number of people. Okay, so where T is the number of R, sorry, number of R as the case is constant proportionality and n is the number of people as you can see on the screen okay so uh four people can paint a fence in three hours means that t equals to three and n equals to what four where the k is constant so you can see it's displayed on the screen so you have three equals to k divided by what four so three so what do we do here we multiply both sides by four. So when you multiply both sides by four, then you arrive with as what? K equals to what? 12 or 12 equals to K, whichever way you want to put it. Okay, so, so now we know that T equals to 12. 
over what? N. Do not forget we derive our constant as 12. Okay, so when N equals to 6, that is to say, yeah. how long will it take 6 people to paint it? So N is 6. When N is 6, then our T is what? A T is what two hours. So six people will take two hours to paint the fence. Already, four people can paint the fence in three hours. Then to take six people, it will take two hours for six people to paint that same fence. Okay, so um I actually have some exercises here for you to try and to challenge yourself. So if you want to uh, if you want to uh, challenge yourself. If you want to see if you really understood what I've just uh, explained here, you can challenge yourself with this exercise. I say thank you very much and I appreciate you so much. I believe you've been able to understand or, and comprehend between direct and indirect proportion and at the same time be able to calculate direct proportion in a very easy and very good, very simplified way and the same thing as what inverse proportion. Thank you very much and I appreciate Do not forget my name remains Ola Dijaka from Goldie Bunch school. Thank you. Bye.